Good morning, friends. Today we are going to talk about uh, something very important and uh, the most important, actually, part of the communication process. This is called as listening. We are going to discuss the concept of listening, the purpose of listening, the steps is, steps in listening, and effective listening. The very first question is, what is listening? You see, we assume that uh, we have been listening all our lives. Since the time we were born, we are listening. And so all of us are experts at that. But that may not be so true, because listening is a technique which requires active participation of the receiver in the communication process. I'm going to give you a definition here. Listening is the process of receiving, constructing meaning, and responding to a spoken or a non-verbal message. Now, this uh, uh, definition comes to you from the International Reading Association. You see, listening is not just picking up the sounds. Listening is also about understanding them, inferring meaning out of them, interpreting them, and then responding to them. So it requires more active participation than you uh, thought, you assumed, you see? So we spend more time using our listening skills than any other communication skills. You know, we, are, we don't talk all the time. Not all of us are speakers, but all of us are listeners. Uh, of course, uh, since this is for teachers, teachers are speakers also. But I'll tell you something. If you are a good listener, you tend to be a good speaker. And you'll see as we proceed how we can do that. Because listening takes practice. And listening is an active process, like I already told you. And it requires a lot of attention on part of the receiver. For effective listening, uh, you need to analyze sounds. How do you analyze sounds? The first thing is you hear them. Hearing is when the sound falls on your eardrums. That is something which is happening all the time. And in fact, not one sound, but several sounds will be falling on your eardrums at one time. If you are in a classroom and there is a fan on, so the fan will be going, uh, making its own sound. Then there'll be some car passing by, making its own sound. The students talking, making their own sound. And so you'll have so many sounds uh, coming and hitting your eardrums. That's just the, the, the first part or the hearing part of listening. But the second stage is when you start to analyze, where you are able to recognize the sound for what it is. So if there is a car, from your previous experience in your life, you know that this is the sound that a car makes. And so you analyze it in your mind and you say, oh, there's a car passing by. Oh, this fan is making a sound. And so you start this process of analysis. Then you organize them. You organize the sounds. You decide in your mind which are the sounds that are useful for me, which are the sounds which are not. And this is a process at the subconscious level you are doing. But those who do it better become better listeners. Interpret the patterns of the sounds. Understand the message and the meaning. Now, now that you have filtered, you have checked out the sounds which you need for your uh, uh, growth. So you, you uh, sieve, the, sieve through the sound. So you remove the sounds that you don't want. And then you are paying attention to the sound that you want. And from that sound, you are inferring meaning and you are deriving meaning. Okay? Uh, most of the communication gaps that we have. You see, when we say that there is a communication gap, it happens because not because we spoke a lot or we did not speak. It mostly happens because we did not listen. You know, listening is the main cause of uh, maximum number of communication gaps in our relationships, in our profession, or any other field of life. Let me first burst the myths of listening before we move on to how to be a better listener. First thing is, listening is not my problem. If we think that uh, I'm a speaker, I don't care how you are listening to me, then that's a very wrong attitude. Because we have to make sure that what we are saying is also being listened to. If that is not happening, then it's useless talking so much or speaking so much, right? Secondly, if you are not able to listen pro properly, and even then you are saying that listening is not my problem, it is the problem of the speaker because he is probably speaking slowly or softly and unclearly, so it's not my problem. Listening is always your problem because you are an active listener. You have to be an active listener. If you cannot hear, you have to make a point. You have to make sure that you can hear. So either you move your place from back of the room to the front of the room, or you ask the speaker to speak loudly, 
make listening your problem don't ignore listening listening and hearing are the same this is another assumption that we have the ears are there they are stuck to my head they are protruding out of my head they are going to catch all the sounds and i'm going to listen but it does not happen that way see like i told you in the previous slide there is a fan and there is a teacher both of them are there and so we are uh, if we have to decide we want to keep listening to the sound of the fan or we want to listen to the sound of the speaker the more we concentrate on the sound of the fan ultimately we block the sound of the speaker and we only listen to the sound of the fan so that is what we are hearing our ears will catch everything so we need to recognize what we want to listen to and what we want to avoid or we want to put it in the background so listening and hearing are not the same at all okay good readers are good listeners somehow this is an assumption that somebody who can concentrate on a text at a length of time will also be a good listener but that's not true uh, because good listeners may not be readers at all listening requires different type of empathy it requires a different type of caring you know than reading so that's not true but good readers can be and may be good listeners also okay uh, smarter people are better listeners that's not true also because we generally uh, of course we when we listen critically uh that's the last stage of listening the last type of listening when we listen in that manner we have to respond and ask questions then perhaps smarter people are better at critical listening but uh everyone can have the listening skill for empathetic listening for appreciative listening you can have that skill all the time so this is uh, a myth that uh, the smartest of people will be the best listeners uh listening improves with age that okay now my mind is distracted so that's why i am not able to listen very well but as i mature i'm going to be a better listener that's not true in fact with age a uh, hearing may get impaired and then it may lead to loss of listening totally so it it has nothing to do with age uh listening skills are difficult to learn no my mind wanders a lot i don't think i can ever be a good listener that's not true uh, all of us can be good listeners because we have to realize that we've got two ears and we've got one mouth so two ears are given to us so that we listen carefully uh according to elmhurst college learning center listening and hearing are not the same hearing is the first stage of listening like i informed in the previous uh, previous slide listening and hearing are not the same at all let's look at the steps in listening then uh hearing as you understand is the first step uh this means listening enough to catch the sound of the speaker and be able to repeat it if you are able to repeat that sound that means you have heard so let me begin with an example and we'll take this example further as we keep on understanding uh the varieties of listening right so there is this uh, speaker who is talking about types of zebras and he says that who's talking about zebras and he says that uh, no two zebras are alike and uh, you are able to go out of the lecture theater and talk to a friend and say oh i was attending a lecture about zebras and the speaker just told us that no two zebras are alike you have heard and that's all you have done okay in this first step understanding when you take what you have heard and understand it with your own background see uh, all of us have our own background and our own uh, 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 cultural or uh, socio economic baggages so we filter all messages through those baggages so if i have some experience about uh, zebras or maybe some animals i'm going to relate that experience to what has just been said so it so understanding begins at that moment so you are able to ask how can the zebras be uh, no two zebras be alike maybe it is uh, the pattern of the stripes now you have given it a meaning of your own the sentence that you heard so you have gone a step beyond hearing you have gone into understanding uh the third basic step is judging when you are sure that you understood what the speaker has said and you have also uh, given a meaning meaning to it then you put two and two together and you start asking questions when you start asking questions the process of judging begins okay so how can the two zebras be different how can they be so different how can the stripes of two zebras be so different then you think uh yeah but uh, each individual's fingerprints are different aren't they 
Okay, so if the fingerprints are different, zebras can be different. So what have you done? From the first stage of hearing about two, different, two zebras being different to understanding that the fact that maybe the stripes are different to actually judging and comparing it with another known scenario, you have now come to a conclusion of your own. This is the process of listening. You have, you have identified each and every aspect of listening here, hearing, understanding and judging. So this, I am talking about the process now. First is grasp of the sound, just picking up the sound, hearing, filtering, wanted or unwanted sound. That means choosing the sound that you want to carry forward with and uh, removing all the unwanted sounds from your uh, frame of reference, not concentrating on them and you practice this and see. It is possible to do that. If you, if you keep on listening to the fan, it will, be, it will be on your mind all the time. But if you obliterate it, if you remove it from your mind, it's, it's just a matter of training. You can do that and you have to be conscious about that. Uh, comprehending, absorbing the sound, assimilating it and remembering what has been said and responding. Responding is coming forward with your own questions or your own doubts about what has been said. So this is the entire process of listening. What is the purpose? Why do we need to be good listeners? You know, because listening we have been doing all our lives ever since we were children. So, uh, so it's okay, you know, we know what the, the purpose behind listening is. So just let's look at this. First is communication can never be complete if your listening is inappropriate. You see, in the process of communication, there is the sender that codes the words or meanings into words or gestures or actions and then sends it across through a channel to the receiver. Now, if the receiver is not paying attention, if the receiver is not listening, then the purpose of communication has failed. It would be like the speaker is speaking to a wall. He can go on speaking to a wall and it is of no use. And that is why this is the most important aspect. An attentive listener stimulates better speaking from the speaker. Uh, you might have seen that even in your classes that uh, the students who ask questions help you prepare better to be a better teacher. And if there is a class that does not respond to you, does not ask you any questions, just sits there and takes note maybe or does not even do that, then you are really not interested in preparing very well and uh, speaking very well. So a good listener makes a good speaker out of the speaker, you know, that is possible. A good listener learns more than, obviously a good listener will learn more than an inattentive listener. Somebody who is not paying attention will not remember, will not respond and somebody who is doing all these three things is a better listener. Uh, a good listener can restructure vague listening in a way that produces clearer meaning. Uh, you might have noticed in, uh, in uh, big programs uh, where you know there is a very uh, famous speaker, maybe some important VIP has made a long speech, made a speech of about half an hour and uh, at the end of the speech the anchor comes on the stage and in three sentences just sums up all that was said in the last half hour or one hour. Because the anchor at that moment is the most attentive listener of that speech. And so he can structure it, he can put it all together and bring out the gist of what was said. And this can be done all the time by all the people to all the conversations. A good listener learns to detect prejudices, assumptions and attitudes. You are able to make out that uh, there is a, a falsity, there is lying or there is lack of confidence or there is an inappropriate attitude of the speaker just by being a very attentive listener. Because you are listening not just with your ears, you are listening with all your faculties, you are paying attention with all your senses. So you are able to make out the little nuances of the speaker's speech. You are able to judge what the speaker really means and what he is saying. All those things will happen if you concentrate on your uh, listening skills and try to improve them. So purpose of listening is to first of all to gain information, 
we go and we listen to lectures, we listen to whatever we are uh, dealing with, we listen to gain information first and foremost. To test the evidence and the assumption, when we go a little further, then in our listening, we are actually checking out that what is being said is, is the right thing or not with our prior experience, with the knowledge that we have. So we are checking that. Uh, we, we see through the verifiable data and assumption. Uh, we listen to be inspired also. We don't listen for knowledge all the time. We like to listen, uh, listen to music, uh, which inspires us. We like to listen to poetry, to songs. We like to listen to great speeches. These are the things that inspire and motivate us. So that could be one of the purposes of listening. Uh, to improve communication, to understand the speaker, to understand, understand the circumstance in which the process of communication has happened. You might have noticed that uh, our entire body language changes uh, when we want to listen carefully. Uh, if two people are sitting down and talking to each other and the moment the listener is interested in what is being said, you will notice that they will change the stance of their body. They will move the angle of their body towards the speaker, move forward on their chair and lean forward towards the speaker in order to grasp everything that is being said. So listening is not just happening with the ears. Listening is happening with your entire body, with your entire personality. So in this session, we have seen what listening is, uh, how listening is different from hearing, how we can be better listeners uh, by following the process of listening and by understanding that listening is not just happening with your ears, but with your entire body. Thank you.